Back on June 4th, which was Nancy's and my 33rd wedding anniversary, I took Nancy and Josh up into the Rocky Springs community up in Alexander County. Those are my old stomping grounds, and uh, I spent the majority of my elementary school years there in a place called Hidden Night, North Carolina, uh, right in, at the base of the Rocky Face Mountain. I showed them the little church where I spent my childhood and drove all the way around the backside of the little church, and it was like I was in a time capsule, like I was going back 45 years in time because that little church hasn't changed much at all. It was nearly identical to the way I remember it all those years ago. This is a picture of Rocky Springs United Methodist Church up in Hidden Night. And the little room that's jutting out on the side of the church, there's one just like it on the other side of the church. And that room was Miss Valder Patterson's Sunday school class. She was one of my favorite teachers of all time. I always remember listening to Miss Valdra and her flannel graph board, the beautiful Bible stories that, that she would tell us. And, and one Sunday, she was telling a group of second, third, and fourth graders about how Jesus died on the cross and how he did that to save us from our sins and how it was his choice of love that he made that sacrifice just for us. And it was a free choice for him to give his life, and it was also a free choice for us to accept his life. And Miss Valder did a beautiful job. She illustrated the story the best way she knew how. She shared from her own personal faith experience. But when Sunday school was over, I still didn't understand. I understood the story fine. But what I didn't understand is why Jesus had to die. Maybe I was an especially sensitive child, but the thought of Jesus having to go through such a horrible death, that just wasn't acceptable to me. I mean, especially when I found out that even if I was the only sinner in the world, that Jesus would have still chosen to go to the cross just for me. I couldn't understand why the only perfect, sinless person that ever walked the face of the earth would, would have to be sentenced by God to such a horrible fate. Later on, as I grew up into my teenage years, the problem even got worse because I learned more details about the horrible violence that was involved in Roman crucifixion, and, and my heart protested all the more. It wasn't right that Jesus had to die such a gruesome, horrible death for people that didn't deserve it. By this time, I'd heard dozens and dozens of sermons on the topic uh, at all those little revival services that I had to go to on that four-point charge out in the middle of Alexander County. And uh, I even had heard, uh, later on when I got to seminary, I heard professors give lectures uh, on theology and about the cross. And, and I really did. I trusted that what the Bible said about Jesus and the cross was true, even if I didn't fully understand it. But deep down inside the recesses of my heart and mind, I knew I needed answers. Well, guys, what I've learned over the past dozen years or so is that it really was that my Sunday school teachers or my seminary professors or those preachers that I heard all those years ago, it wasn't their fault that I did not understand the cross. I now know that my heart and my mind, they simply hadn't arrived at a place where I could receive the truth that God was trying to teach me and embrace that truth. Somewhere in my middle 30s, I finally came to a better understanding. I finally came to a place of peace about the cross of Christ, to a place where I am now persuaded, heart, mind, and soul, that Jesus' sacrifice on that cross was the perfect choice, the choice that only God could make to make us right with him. I'm now convinced that God knew exactly what he was doing. Whether I completely understand the cross or not, I know that it was the right choice, that God made the only choice he could make. And today we're going to read from the book of Romans, chapter 3. 
Paul's teaching about the sacrifice of Christ. And after we're finished, I'm going to share some of my own journey, how Paul has taught me through the years and helped me to arrive at a place of peace when I look at the cross of Christ. Listen now to the word of God. This is Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 26 from the New Living Translation. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus, when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. Guys, I never had a problem understanding why God was angry at people who had sinned. I never had a problem realizing why God wanted to punish people. All uh, I've ever had to do is look around at people and the things that they do and the way that they treat others, and I realize God is justified in pretty much any punishment he chooses to give human beings. I can even remember as a small child getting angry at people who did mean things to others, especially people who made fun of those who were weaker or less fortunate than themselves. One time, I think I was in about the fourth grade, just about the same time I would have been in Miss Valver's Sunday school class, I came to the defense of one of my classmates uh, who was a little bit challenged, and people loved to pick on him. Well, one day he was being picked on by a bully out on the playground, and I don't remember the name of the boy. I don't even remember the name of the bully, for that matter. I just remember feeling anger, almost rage in my heart when I saw what was happening to that little boy. And so... Right before the boy was about to get a punch in the stomach, I intervened. I told the bully to pick on somebody his own size, even though I probably didn't weigh 80 pounds soaking wet, and he was a lot bigger than I was, and he told me to mind my own business. And then he punched me in the stomach. And to be honest, I don't remember a whole lot of what happened after that. All I remember is a bunch of dust and fur flying and me giving that bully some of his own medicine, but both of us ending up in the principal's office after it was all over. Well, even now, looking back at what happened on that, that playground all those years ago, some 45, uh, yeah, 45 years ago, there's part of me that still gets satisfaction out of what I did to that bully on the playground. And part of me still wants to ask Jesus why he didn't do the same thing to those people who were about to nail him to the cross. Why? Did the Son of God allow these people to treat him with such blatant, violent disrespect? Why did he choose to die when he could have just as easily summoned the garrison of heavenly hosts down to come to his defense and show, show everybody there that day where the power really was? Well, the answer that I have now come to see from Romans and in other places in Scripture is that the bullies of this world, they're the ones who need God's mercy and grace the most. They're what, who need what Jesus accomplished on that cross the most. You see, even while Jesus was hanging on that cross, bleeding and dying, he prayed for the forgiveness of the bullies who had put him there. He didn't lash out in retaliation. He prayed. He prayed for their sakes because he knew that the bondage that those men were under was so powerful. You see, he had done battle with that uh, power of sin his whole entire life uh, that he had been on earth and all, well, really all through creation. He understood how powerful and how deceptive that that sin really was. And he knew that those men 
And all people would never come to understand how wrong they were by simply being conquered, by simply being given what they deserved. Jesus knew that the only way that those horrible men were ever going to be made right with God, the only way that they were going to really see and witness who God really is, what God's heart is really like, would be to hear the one that they just crucified praying for them. Guys, I cannot overstate how radically different from any other response they had ever seen before that was. They had never seen a human being behave on the cross the way Jesus behaved. And we know, we know that at least some of those perpetrators, they heard the prayer that Jesus prayed for them. We know that he touched some of their hearts because at the moment that Jesus cries and gives up his spirit, Matthew tells us that some of those soldiers exclaimed, truly, truly, this man was the son of God. There's only one way that those ignorant, sinful, detestable men would have ever been moved to say such a thing where their hearts would have been transformed that miraculously Jesus had found a way to reach those men where there was no other way. He had found a way to shine the light of love into the darkness and the bondage of their sin. You see, guys, what I now understand is that Jesus... Jesus didn't have the same need to be vindicated or to put people in their place like you and I do. His anger comes from a totally different place. When Jesus looked at those men who had crucified him, he didn't see mortal enemies. He saw people he loved. He saw men who were dying eternal death Men who were on their way to hell because of their bondage to sin. And Jesus knew that the only way to defeat that sin that was binding those men's hearts and killing all of his creation, the only way to defeat it was to meet it head on by the power of holy love. Holy love is the new idea when I think about the cross and about Jesus, that's what I grapple with now. What I pray is for God to help me, to teach me how to understand holy love better because holy love is the only answer for humans' bondage to sin. Paul says nobody, not the soldiers who crucified him, not the bully on the playground, not me, not even Miss Valdra herself, Nobody can meet the glorious standards that God has set because we've all sinned before him. We have all gotten corrupted by the presence of that sin in our hearts and we would all die in bondage to that sin except for what Jesus did for us. You see, on the cross of Christ, holy love wins the battle. On the cross of Christ, Jesus met that sin head on and refused to give in to its violent methods. Jesus refused to let the violence done to him on that cross conquer the holy love that the Father had placed in his heart. And because love won on the cross, because violence couldn't corrupt the heart of Jesus, even some of the men, even some of the ones who had put the nails in his hands, they came to believe. Now, sometimes in the heat of the moment, anger still wells up inside of me, especially when I see injustice in the world. I still want to give people what they deserve, but then the Holy Spirit bears witness to my spirit, and he reminds me again, Jim, holy love is the only power in the universe that is stronger than human bondage to sin. It is our only answer. And the cross of Christ is where holy love, we see it at its finest moment in Jesus praying for those who crucified him on that cross. Guys, that's why Jesus chose to die. He chose to die because he would not give in to sin. That was the only way, the only hope 
for human hearts to ever change. And that's why I now find perfect peace when I look at that old rugged cross. I pray that you'd allow Jesus to give you that same peace as you look at that cross and as we bow before him right now in prayer. Father, as hard as it is for us to sometimes see, remind us today that the holy love offered to us freely on that old rugged cross, it's our, our only hope. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would plant the seeds of that love in our hearts today, that you would let the seeds of love sink their roots deep down into the soil of our souls let it remake us and remold us after the image of our Savior so that we might put our confidence in the holy love that it took for Jesus to give us this perfect gift. Lord, help us to accept that gift today. For we pray in his powerful name. Amen.